Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, so I got a question for you. Have you ever gotten just completely and totally fed up with yourself? Yeah, just like, ah, me. You ever done that? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, the last four weeks, I've just been at a point where I'm just completely fed up with myself. I'm just tired of the way I am. I'm, I'm, I'm on edge all the time. I'm just, I'm, I'm super like high stress. And fortunately, my wife isn't. She's actually a very chill person. Um, but I'm just always on edge all the time. So it always makes me irritable. And I get angry at dumb stuff. And uh, I get, I'm just constantly... Y'all are like, what is, where is he going with this? This pastor, like, what is the deal? I was, our motto here at, at Crossroads is real God for real people. So I'm, I'm being real people this morning, okay? So um, if it makes you uncomfortable, sorry. Uh, so I just get irritable. And here's the problem is it makes me super tired. So like, I only have like three functional hours in the day that I'm like in a decent mood. It's like nine to noon, which fortunately is right when church falls. So you guys get me at my best between nine and noon. But I've been super irritable. There's this guy next door to me. He's got this uh, emotional support dog. And uh, I'm like, dude, your emotional support dog is making me need emotional support. Because uh, this dog just like barks all the time. And I'm going crazy. And we're trying to like how to have, have a civil conversation with this guy about his dog. The other day, a storm blew through and knocked over a tree in his yard. My first thought was, and I hope everybody's okay. My first thought was, man, maybe he got that, maybe the wind got that dog, right? <laughs> Yes, I am a horrible person. Everybody, right? We've, we've, got the, we've all got this stuff. And here's the thing. I talk to some people that are like, well, I'm not really super high stressed, but I just get frustrated myself because I feel so lazy. And I know there's stuff I should be doing. I just don't feel like doing it. And I just don't have the energy to do it. And I just don't, frankly, I don't care. And, and so you feel like sometimes you're like, I know I shouldn't be apathetic, but I'm kind of apathetic about my apathy. Uh, anybody ever had that feeling? Yeah. We, we get just frustrated. And you know the worst part about me after all this stuff I've told me that's just horrible about me? I think I'm better than you. Right? Right? Isn't that, the, isn't that how we work? In fact, this is, I, I, I made this really fancy chart of my emotional state, my ongoing emotional state. Uh, I made this, you're, you guys are going to be impressed. This is how I usually am, right? Most of the time, like a lot of time up here, I'm like, I am, I am such a wonderful person. There's so many good things about me. I, you know, I'm, I'm, there's so many, like, let's be honest. Most of us say I'm, I'm a good person, right? But then I all of a sudden have this realization about some things about me that I don't like. Like the fact that I'm always anxious and angry and worried and freaking out about stuff I can't control. And it just makes everybody around me miserable. And all of a sudden it, it just comes crushing down on me and I go, huh. I'm a horrible person. Anybody relate to that? Like this one, it, it, sometimes it just depends on the day. You wake up in the morning like, ah, oh, life is so good. I'm so wonderful. There's so many great things about me. And the next day you're like, oh, horrible. And, and here's how it works with me. I, I'm, I'm like, I start to realize just what a horrible person I am. You know, I, I, and I'm like, man, I've got so many hangups and like, I can't even handle a barking dog. And I get this anxiety over a barking dog. What is wrong with me? I'm this wimpy guy that can't even handle a barking dog. And then God will be like, he'll come and comfort me and I'll start feeling good about myself again. And then I'll be like, oh, I'm so wonderful. Y'all are really quiet, so I know that you relate to this. <laughs> because most of us, we hang out somewhere in here, right? Like kind of depends on the day. Ah, oh, I'm horrible. I did that thing. I knew I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have. Oh, no. Nah. Why do I always date guys like that? Right? Or girls or whatever. I knew I shouldn't have answered his text or her text. You're like, I'm a horrible person. But then things get going along and you have a little success. And you're like, I'm such a wonderful person. Then you respond to the text again or whatever. You know, like what's this? this there's this cycle that we all do. Anybody relate to this? Just go up and down and up. And you're like, ah, uh, 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 me. And then you just get fed up with yourself. And I, like I said, I've been for about the last four weeks, I've just been fed up with myself. I'm like, something's got to change. And that's the problem, though. 
I, I, I don't really like change. I'm guessing you don't either. We like change on our terms. But when we know there's something about us that actually needs to change, it's really hard. That's what Paul, he talked about this. The apostle Paul, he said, here's the struggle I face. I don't understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. You ever done that? You're like, why am I doing this again? This never works out well, but I'm doing it again. And this is a struggle. And this is the cool thing is this is Paul, like Paul, the apostle Paul. And he's saying he has the same struggle as you and me and the same thing going on here. He says, for I know that nothing good dwells in me. Like it's the reality down here that I'm a horrible person. Honestly, I can tell myself I'm a good person, but I do some really horrible things. That's in my flesh. That's in this, you know, the outside of me and what I do, right? He says, for I have the desire to do what's right, but not the ability to carry it out. And we can all relate to that too. I know I'm better than this. I am better than this. I should not respond that way every time they do that in traffic. Somebody cuts me off. Like, but I just, the hand goes out the window and I don't know what, you know, like, and you know you shouldn't do it, right? But we do it and then we're like, oh, I'm a horrible person. But then you let somebody in and you're like, I'm a good person. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how we're like that? We're just like, whoosh, 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 whoosh. This is Paul saying, he's like, I got the problem. I got the same problem, man. I don't think it was traffic for him. You know, they didn't have cars back then. But I have the desire to do what's right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not, for do, I do not do the good I want. Like, I really, I really think in my mind I'm a good person, but hmm, what I actually do. But the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. And we all relate. Now, if I do what I do not want, it's no longer... I who did it, but sin that dwells in me. So here's this thing about being a Christian. When the Spirit of God comes in you, your new identity as someone who is perfectly and totally accepted of God. But the challenge is we still go back to those old habits, those old responses, the way we used to respond to things BC, before Christ, before Christ came in and changed us. So God sees us as the perfection of Christ, but we see what we are, and that's where we have this fluctuation where we have moments where like, wow, God accepts me just as I am, but oh, I'm a horrible person. But God sees you the same through it all. So the, the challenge we face is starting to act like the royalty that God has made us to be. You know what I mean? Like he says, I've made you my sons and daughters. Now start acting like it. You're already my son and daughter. You're accepted. Now start acting like it. Behave like the son or the daughter of the king but we face this struggle. So I find it to be a law. This is the way it works out in me that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. Isn't it crazy how on the same day you can do really good things and then just really devious things in the same day. For I delight in the law of God. Man, I want to please God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am. That's a heavy word. Remember that song, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Who will deliver me from this body of death? And then he says, thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we can be delivered. Now, here's the thing about change, okay? A few years ago, I went and got a master's degree in counseling. And they sat us down the first day and they said, why do you want to do counseling? And most of the people were like, I want to do counseling because counseling helped me so much and I want to help other people. And, and we all shared our stories. And then the guy said, sweet guy, older guy, he said, okay, listen, I don't want you to get your hopes up too much. He said, but here's the thing. People don't change. We were like, what? We're here to help people change. He's like, I'm sorry. He's like, the statistics show like maybe three to 7% of people will actually see lasting change in their life. And we're like, well, that's discouraging. He's yeah, but before you discourage, he goes, here's the thing. That's job security for you counselors. <laughs> and what I learned through counseling is that really people in general don't change because change is really hard. In fact, we learned this thing called the trans theoretical model of change. And this is how change looks like, okay? And so you'll probably relate to this. 
we all kind of are hanging out in this state of we're like, I'm a, I'm a decent person, right? I'm okay. Everything's good. This is what's called pre-contemplation where there's, you don't feel like there's any need to change your behavior. Everybody around you thinks there's a need for you to change your behavior, but you're like, ah, I'm doing good. Everything's good, right? And, and then something happens and you all of a sudden have this realization. You're like, why is my wife like not talking to me anymore? Or my son or my daughter? Or is it, why is every time I get around that people, those people at work, things like really turn bad, right? And you start to go, maybe there's a problem here. And that's what comes to what's called contemplation. There's a way where you start to become aware that there's a problem that exists. And this is where you all of a sudden start to go, hey, I'm fine. And you're like, oh, oh, maybe things aren't quite as fine as I thought they were. Contemplation is where you start to go, hmm, maybe something does need to change within me. Then Prochaska, the guy that created this, the trans-theoretical model, he says the next step is what happens is you come to preparation. This is where you start going, man, I do need to change some stuff, but if I were to change that, that would mean this and this would have to be changed. And, oh, that's going to be really hard. So you decide you're going to make a plan on how you're going to change that. Then he says what you do is you take action. And this is what's hard, but here's the thing. The challenge from like, preparation to action is usually right here. It has to get really miserable for you. Life has to get real miserable. You have to have that moment where you're like, I just, I'm fed up with myself. I'm fed up with these things I keep doing over and over again. He says the shift from preparation to action, there has to be like a lot of discomfort. And then you go into what's called maintenance. And maintenance is where it's really hard because listen, here's the thing. Most of life is maintenance. You know, anybody can build a brand new house with new materials and it look really pretty. The question is, are you going to be able to keep it looking pretty? Because maintenance is what gets most of us. You can build anything pretty and new and start stuff. But man, it's like, how are you going to hold on to what you've made and keep it nice? That's what a lot of us, we get everything we wanted. And then we found out the hard part wasn't getting it. It was not messing it up once you got it. And that's what maintenance is. And so maintenance gets really hard. And what ends up happening is that we kind of go back usually to what's called the relapse. And we go, well, I made a couple little changes. I'm a good person. I intended to change some things. My wife's not yelling at me anymore. My kids are sort of okay with me now. And so you kind of let it slide again. And then we go back to what we used to be in the beginning. Anybody relate to this cycle here? You don't have to raise your hand. I know you do. (laughs) According to the world and statistics, People don't change. But we as Christians believe that God himself, the Holy Spirit, is living inside of us. And that's what gives us, Paul says this, he says, this is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Like everybody says people don't change, but we've got this weird confidence that we actually can be more than we are right now. It's not that we're sufficient in ourselves, to claim anything is coming from us. It's it's not that we can do it on our own because we've tried to do it on our own. I've tried to be a good person. I have tried to talk myself out of my anxiety. It doesn't work. I've tried to talk myself out of my anger. It doesn't work. I'm really bad at it and I just get angrier at myself. But our sufficiency, the ability to do what we need to do to change, it comes from God who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant He's basically calling us to a new way. Instead of depending on ourselves, he's saying, I need you to depend on me to accomplish in you what you can't do on your own. Not of the letter, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit, that spirit that's living in you, gives you life. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, it says in Romans, lives in you and will give you the ability to change those things about you that you're just make, they're just making yourself disgusted about who you are. The things where you're just like, I'm just so fed up with myself. I'm so fed up with me doing this thing again. Always going back to that addiction. Always going back to those same kind of people. Always getting into those toxic relationships. Always getting angry. Always getting frustrated. Always screaming about stuff I can't control and making everybody miserable. Always upset when things aren't exactly like I want them to be. And I'm talking about me, not y'all, Okay. right? The strength you need is going to come from God himself. But here's the challenge we face, okay? You know, every decision you make in life is kind of like building a house. And what I've found is a lot of times, most of us, we we decide what we want our life to look like and we start building our house. 
And we say, okay, if I can just get my finances here this way, and if I can get my spouse acting this way, my kids behaving this way, and you start to build this house around. And then at the end you go, okay, now Jesus, come and be the roof on my house and protect my plans. And Jesus is like, no, no, I'm not a roof over your plans. He says, I actually need to be something completely different. But what happens is we, we, we know what we think we need, right? And so we're building our little house. And then at the end we go, okay, now I'm going to say a prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm going to add you at the top, the cherry on top. Jesus, protect my plans. These wonderful plans I made for myself. And he's like, I'm sorry it doesn't work that way. In fact, that's what Jesus was talking about when he said this. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? This is Jesus. These are the sweet, loving words of Jesus. You know, we don't see this on a Hallmark card, right? He says, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. And when the stream broke against it, immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. What he's saying is basically, guys, if you're building on your plans and your ideas and asking me to put a, a roof over it, it's not going to roll that way. What needs to happen is I need to be the foundation that you build on. Because here's the thing. It says the grass will fade and the flowers will fall, but the words of the Lord will live on forever. What's in here works all the time. And we're beneficiaries of that because we've seen a lot of our civilization built on principles in here. And that's why we've got life so good right now. A lot of the things we take for granted, equality, justice, those are things that are preached in here that was, was, did not exist in the world in any kind of an ethical, moral context prior to the Bible. And, and here's what's happening right now. If you're depending on yourself, like he talks about here, you're building on, your, on yourself, it, it, sooner or later, it's gonna fall. And that's why the key is, is you've, gotta, you've gotta do something here. You've gotta give up on yourself. My dad says it this way. He's like, you'll feel a lot better when you give up all hope, Joel. But don't give up hope in what God can do. Give up hope in your ability to control everything, to manage everything, to keep everything like you want it to be. But what makes us so miserable all the time is that we refuse to surrender to God because we're just certain we know exactly what we need. I know what it's going to take for me to get over this. God's like, no, you don't know anything about you, but I do. So you've got to give up on yourself, acknowledge you can't do it, and then start building your life on Christ. Stop saying, okay, God, look, here, here's my life. I've got everything just like I want it. Now I'm going to show up at church and play, pray that he blesses me. And, he, and then what happens is the rain comes and the flood comes and wipes out your house and you're like, Jesus, why didn't you protect my plans? He's like, well, because you built on the wrong thing. You should have been building this way up, not asking me to be a roof over your plans. And we see that so many times. You know, I've been hanging out in the church for 40 something years. And I've seen that so many times where people, they, they, they make, they build their life around what they want. And then they, everything comes crashing down and they call the pastor and they're like, pastor, what am I supposed to do? And the pastor's like, I don't know what to tell you. It's like if somebody were to call you and say, hey, I'm calling for my cell phone. I just drove my truck off a cliff. What should I do, pastor? Pastor's like, uh, hang on. It's about to get real ugly. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. And what happens a lot of times is we spend years building our house on the things that we want and then it comes crumbling down and we want God to deliver us overnight, but it takes a long time to build a house. It takes a long time, especially right now, right? Because there's no materials. <laughs> I'm talking literally, but we're talking figuratively. And this is the challenge. A lot of times we build something for a long time built on what we want and then we ask Jesus to put a roof on it and, and then it falls apart and we think it's going to be fixed overnight. I had a guy come up to me one time right here, this was several years ago. He said, hey man, can you pray for me? I just want my life back to normal. And I was like, what do you mean back to normal? He's like, my wife's been gone for six weeks and I'm just begging her to come back so life can be back to normal. And I was like, well, it sounds like your wife doesn't want life back to normal. 
He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, but man, I started coming to church now. I've been going for six weeks. And I'm like, whoop de friggin' do Who cares? Have you changed? He's like, no. And I'm like, well, your wife, the reason she's left is because she doesn't like normal. The house you've built together is not what she likes. And I'm not talking about a stick house here. I'm talking about the way they've decided to handle things, the way they respond to each other. He's like, I just want it back to normal. I'm like, well, she doesn't because she doesn't like normal. So what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to renovate the house a little bit. And he's like, well, what does that mean? I just want her back in the house. I'm like, yeah, you do, but she doesn't because you've made her life miserable, apparently. And that's what happens a lot of times is we say, I want it fixed now. It's like, well, it took you 15 years to get to this place. I had a guy come on a hike with me one time and he told me, he's like, this hike has been so good for me. He's like, it took me 15 years to get into this bad of shape. That was a joke. (laughs) He's like, but over the last six months, I'm sorry, it's just like a heavy message. I'm gonna lighten it up here in just a second, okay. But over the last six months, he's like, I started to get in shape and he's like, I've started to change my habits and it's, man, I feel so much better about myself. And, And here's the thing, that's the thing about this. When you build your house on the rock of Christ, Here's the beautiful thing that happens. There's this verse, Psalm 103, it says this. It says, I say this verse every morning when I wake up. I say this, I quote this verse to myself. It's Psalm 103. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. And so many times we make the Christian walk about don't do, don't do, don't do. But you know, God's will for you. In fact, there's a quote by a guy named Chesterton. He said, And he said, the chief aim of God's plan is to give room for good things to run wild. When we work within the order of what he asks of us, when we build our life on him, there's a freedom, there's a liberty, there's all sorts of benefits that come to you. And we so many times are like, oh, I don't want to give up this. And God's like, you don't even know what you're giving up. You don't even like what you have there. It's making you miserable. But you're like, but you won't surrender it because you can't even envision something better but I've got something better for you. C.S. Lewis compares it to this. It's like somebody coming to you and you're playing in a a puddle of mud and you're like, ooh, mud, fun, yay. And you're like, hey, let me take you down to the beach. I've got a a house on the beach. And you're like, no, but my mud. And he's like, yeah, but I want to take you to the beach. But you don't even know what the beach looks like because you're just so obsessed with playing in the mud. And that's what happens a lot with us. God is saying, man, if you'll build on this, I've got a lot for you but you've got to trust I've got something better for you than what you have right now. And a lot of times what he has to do to get you to that place is to have to make you so miserable where you're at and fed up with yourself that you say, okay, God, I surrender. I surrender. And that's the only way it's going to work because what you are where you are now because you've been doing what you've been doing. So if you're not happy with where you are right now, (laughs) it's pretty clear what needs to happen. Stop doing the same stuff. And I'm preaching to myself because I'm in a place right now where I'm like, I'm so frustrated with myself. And every morning, what I've been having to do is this. And this is the, this is, I wish there was a really, well, there is a really simple answer, but it's hard, okay? This is what you have to do. Jesus talked about it this way. He said, listen, if you guys want to come after me, if you want to be my disciple, this is all you got to do. Super easy, but it's hard. If anybody wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. The way that you've been doing that's got you to where you are today, you got to give that up. You got to say, I, it's not working. Like, I just can't overcome my hangups. I've got these goofy anxiety over by the barking dogs. That's my weird thing, right? Like, you just got to stop being that way. Give that up and say, God, it's clearly not working for me. And then you drop your knees and you surrender and say, God, uh, what I'm doing isn't working and you've made it abundantly clear. And then it says, then you deny yourself. Get, that's basically give up, give up your own way, take up your cross, die to that old way, and follow me. And, and here's the thing about this. This has to happen every morning because there's these things we surrender to God. God, I'm not gonna try and control everything anymore. God, I'm gonna surrender my son to you. God, I'm gonna just... Surrender my addiction to you and my need for for affirmation and approval, whatever it is. But every morning you have to get up and and here's the problem. They say the problem with a living sacrifice, which it says, I urge you, dear brothers, in view of God's mercies to present your bodies as living sacrifices. The problem with a living sacrifice is every morning it wants to jump off the altar and run away. So you got to grab it and get, get back here. 
I'm going to die to that part of me again every morning. And you get up and you say, okay, Lord, I'm going to read this because I'm going to try and build my life on this. I don't even understand half of what's in here, but I'm going to read it. And you say, God, show me what I need to know in this. And you're only going to, here's the thing. If you're trying to live off of a steady diet of your once a month church attendance, it's not going to work. If you're depending on me to communicate to you what it's going to take to live in the world, it's not going to work because I got my own issues, man. Right? I can't even pull myself together. I'm trying. If you're depending on some person on TV, it's not going to work. And here's the really hard thing, guys. There's this verse in Hebrews that says, God shakes what can be shaken to show what is unshakable. And we're in a time right now, and I think it's gonna, it, we've been shaken. I've seen people that I thought were like leaders in the Christian faith crash and burn, ruin their lives in the last year because everything got shaken and what they had built their life upon got shaken. And I think it's only gonna get a little bit worse. And you don't have to be scared by that. But here's the thing. If you're built on this, you have nothing to fear because this ain't going away. And there's gonna be stuff that God's gonna allow to keep being shaken because he wants to see how unshakable you are. Is your faith unshakable? And a lot of people you look at, you're like, wow, they're strong people. They're probably gonna fall by the wayside. And you go, what happened? Well, they were probably building their life on what they wanted and trying to put Jesus on top. And it doesn't work. But when you build your life on this, you ain't going nowhere. And the ground starts shaking and people around you start shaking and falling. And you're like, and, and, and here's the thing. If you build on this foundation, the little shack that you were trying to build, he'll, he'll, that'll wash away. But the foundation, he'll go, hey, let's build a mansion here on this. And that mansion will be a place that everybody can run to in the middle of the storm. The strength that he's building in you. All the people around you, you become a light to them. You say, man, thank God the Lord gave us this truth that I've been building upon because otherwise I would have been shaken too by this, but I'm not even shaken by this. And as the world around you seems like it's going crazy, you go, ah, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest house frame that I've built, <laughs> but wholly cling to Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. That's an old hymn and it's so true. And we're in a time right now where it, it, it's going to take this every day, guys. It's going to take this every day because things are just going to get more and more shaken, but you don't have to be shaken. You can be rock solid in the middle of it. Not because you're so rock solid, but because what you're standing on is rock solid. And this is the time for people like you and me to rise up and say, all right, I'm sick of myself but I know that Christ in me is gonna give me the power to become all that I cannot be. And so I'm gonna stop building my stupid little shack here that's gonna fall apart as things start to shake more and more. And I'm gonna build on this. And every morning I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna read my Bible, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna say, Lord, reveal what I need to know about this. And he will. And then you get up and you say, all right, what's that thing I need to surrender that I need to crucify this morning? Take it, put it on the cross. And then walk it out every day. And here's the thing, that's where the benefits start flowing. Forget not all the benefits of serving the Lord. And there are tons of benefits. And you know what they look like? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Right in the middle of the storm around you, you're standing on the rock and showing that to the world. And you're walking in so much peace, you just, it's that peace that passes all understanding, that guards your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Does that make sense? We're gonna take a minute here. Um, I just wanna encourage you, let's seal this deal here, okay? Because every one of us, we've got stuff in us that we need to surrender this morning. And maybe you've been trying to control everything. And maybe you keep going back to these old habits. Maybe that you, you've been depending on your finances to get you where you need to go. And God's saying, nope, nope, money's not gonna do it for you. We're gonna take a moment. Just right where you're seated, I want you to bow your head. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.